Good morning, rock stars. Welcome to Free Motion Quilting Friday. My name is Holly, a knight of string and story, and it is my job to guide you to quilt with confidence. And this is Havana. Hey, baby girl. Hey, baby girl. How are you? You got to get down. This morning, we are going to be talking about the upcoming quilting plan challenge, as well as working on binding this quilt together. So if you are here with me live or watching the replay, do please say hello in the chat off Havana. And I am going to get our video pulled up so that I can see you and see our lovely chat for our time together. Huzzah! Yay, yay, yay! All right, here we go. Let me make sure that I'm sufficiently muted on this end. All right. Oh, good morning. All right. So, guys, the quilting plan challenge. Let's jump straight into talking about what that is about before we go any further, the Quilting Plan Challenge is an upcoming event. We are starting on Monday, and I'm so excited because this is a free five-day event that I'm going to be hosting right here on YouTube, and we are tackling the question, what the heck do I quilt where? It's very important to me as a part of my job of guiding you to quilt with confidence to make sure that we start at the very beginning and create an environment for answering some of those basic questions that sometimes we feel a little silly asking. There's no need to feel silly asking them, but we have this whole thing as grown-ups that we think we're supposed to know the things even when we don't and haven't had a context to learn them yet. So the Quilting Plan Challenge is going to be um, a wonderful, safe environment to ask some of those foundational questions and get started figuring out how you can begin to finish your own quilts and to free motion quilt them with confidence, okay? So y'all, I have dropped a um, link in the chat for those of you who have not yet had the opportunity to sign up. The advantage of signing up for the Quilting Plan Challenge is that I have a fabulous workbook for you that we're going to be going through together next week. And it's going to help um, guide our time together, but also create a resource for you that as you go forth and begin to create quilting plans for your own quilts, decide what to quilt where, um, work on adjusting your tension, you're going to have this wonderful workbook as a resource to help you in the future, to help remind you of what we learned together inside the challenge. All right. Okay, if you are here with me live, do say hi down in the chat. I see a whole bunch of you. I am getting my thread changed, and um, I'm changing my presser foot, and we are going to be binding this here lovely quilt together in just a moment. But I realize that I do not have the correct thread on here, so we're going to tackle that first. Let's see as well. I do want to give you guys an updated number. Good morning, Jan. Um, as of this morning, I think we had 3,400 folks signed up for the Quilting Plan Challenge. I want to see where we're at now. Um, we have almost 3,500. So do please jump in. Sue, I don't know, but I wish I had a better answer for you. <laughs> Sue said, why is it so hard to find these programs? Um, good morning, Karen. Good morning, Suzanne. Good morning, Dan. Good morning, Rachel. I'm so glad that you guys are here. I'm going to grab this lovely red thread over here. This is Orifil 2277. It is one of the colors inside Quilting Rockstars 2, my second Orifil curated collection. Um, and this is the, the color that matches this lovely bittersweet. Oh my gosh, you guys. Of all the colors that are part of my Orifil collections, especially like the solids in particular, the color that I have been the most surprised and delighted by has been bittersweet. This is the Paintbrush Studio Solid. And it's just this lovely red orange. Heather and I are both a bit obsessed, if we're real honest. All right, let's wind a bobbin together. Ooh. I'm going to wind this bobbin. And then before we actually finish changing out my presser foot, we're going to make sure we clean up under the bobbin race. I've been doing some free motion quilting, so I know there's some lint buildup. Y'all, this thread is giving me, maybe the end on it is funny. I know there's some lint buildup, and as we'll talk about very extensively one week from today, um, one of the biggest uh, challenges when it comes to adjusting your tension that is also one of the easiest fixes it's just simply making sure that your bobbin race is clean. Because when Link gets built up in there, 
it really affects your machine's ability to keep those stitches nice and even because as that top thread and that bottom thread are looping together, if there's lint or junk or anything like that, it's, it's going to affect that and it'll get caught and it'll make things just a wee bit wonky. All right, let's say good morning, everyone. So in an ideal world, if you're on my YouTube channel on Friday mornings about 9.30, once I hit go live, the video should pop up, but of course it's technology. So sometimes it's not quite that straightforward, but the good news is that it always takes me a minute to get going anyway. Now, for those of you who are here, hey Kate, for those of you who are here, how many of you guys participated in the Quilting Plan Challenge back in May? And what encouragement do you have either for folks who have recently signed up um, and are hoping to grow in their confidence around FMQ, um, or for folks who are wondering you know, is this free challenge right for me? Is this going to teach me what I need um, to get started and to begin to face perhaps my anxiety about free motion quilting? Um, I can say that the event back in May, it was hands down the most popular event that I've ever run. It's part of what makes me so excited to teach it again this time. And I very much felt like I received a ton of stories of folks who found it helpful. But the best stories come directly from you, my dear rock star. So if you are here and you participated in the quilting plan challenge last time, uh, will you jump in the comments and tell us a little bit about what you loved about it and uh, how your quilting journey is going for those of you who are like, okay, what's the quilting plan challenge? Like what's going on? So the quilting plan challenge is a free event that I teach here on YouTube. And I have a lovely workbook available for download. That's why there's a link up at the top of the chat. Um, that is for signing up and then you will get the download uh, for that workbook that is just a tool to help set you up for success during our time together next week. And we're going to be tackling the very important and pressing question, what the heck do I quilt where? This is one of the biggest things um, that is a roadblock to folks who are wanting to start their free motion quilting journey that just even deciding like, okay, well, even if I figured out how to learn those motifs, how do I know where to put them on my quilt? And we're going to start breaking some of that down. And then from there, I will explain to you how you can take your next steps to begin actually. Oh my gosh, you guys, did you see that? There was a whole rabbit in my machine. A whole rabbit. And then from there, we'll actually break down like, okay, so now that I have an idea of um, how to make decisions about what quilting motifs will look good on my quilt. How do I actually begin to learn those motifs and feel confident moving my quilt under my machine? All right. All right. I'm just, I'm just doing a quick, quick peek here, man. It was really dirty down in there. I knew I had been doing a lot of quilting, but I did not realize that I had let it get so junky. Always remember that you want to be brushing lint out of your machine not back into your machine. That's why you see me like pulling my brush out and then putting it in the trash because we want that nice and far away from everything else we're doing. Look at that. We even got a piece of lint. There we go. Okay. Basic reminder, if you are here with me and you have not cleaned out your bobbin race recently, please go do so. Hey, Sharon, so glad you're here. So each day next week for the Quilting Plan Challenge, I'm going to be live here on YouTube at 3 p.m. Eastern. I will be live for 30 to 45 minutes. Um, and then on Friday, we have a very special lesson. None of this is lining up. Um, on Friday, we have a very special lesson, and that lesson will go for an hour um, because that lesson is called Tension Without Tension. And we're going to be talking about some really practical things. The The week itself basically starts very theoretical and becomes more practical as we go along. So we start with what is a quilting plan? And then we begin to move into like, well, how, well, how do I make one? What questions do I need to be asking to make these decisions? Then we get into, okay, so specifically now that I know what my quilt is doing and how to make decisions about motifs, how do I draw that out and make a map for myself? And then the you know next logical question, of course, is like, well, how do I execute that map? How do I actually get this stitching onto my quilt? And that begins with tension, hence the very special class at the end of the week. So 
five lessons, 30 to 45 minutes until the end of the week. I try to keep my teaching itself to about 30 minutes, uh, but I always take questions at the end. So that can make it go a little bit longer. Um, and then I teach for close to an hour on Friday. Lots of question and answer after that as well. Uh, basically, just wanted to set you up for success for the next steps in your free motion quilting journey. Um, there was something else. Oh, for those of you who are maybe here and you're going, well, that sounds great, but I cannot tune in at 3 p.m. Eastern. There'll be a replay. Don't worry. Um, and that's the other advantage of making sure that you register for the event is that you get... Um, not only that free workbook, but I will send out an email each day with a link directly to the replay. So I'm going to drop the link one more time. And then I want to hear from you guys. What are you working on during our free motion quilting Friday here today? I see um, that Shane is working on some doodling. What are the rest of you guys working on? Sue, what's up? I saw that the leaves are starting to change ever so slightly for you, Sue which is wild to me. Do they not realize that it is only August? It is entirely too early for leaves to be changing. Sue is in Canada though, you guys, and I am down here in Georgia. So obviously we live in very different climates. Um, yes. Yeah, so what are you guys working on? Are any of you guys finishing up final projects for Free Motion Quilting Academy? That is another very special thing that we have happening next week is the Free Motion Quilting Academy graduation. And my current students are working very hard. Kate, you're asking for a ruler work class too? Listen, it is in the books for 2022 to have a proper ruler class available, which is so exciting. Listen, I'm so excited about that. Uh, but in the meanwhile, I do plan on teaching intro to ruler work probably in October. I have not published an official date yet, frankly, because I'm running around like a chicken with my head cut off. Um, working on the challenge and the academy and the fall festival. Uh, but here in the next couple of weeks, I'll be publishing a workshop schedule for the fall. And I'm definitely planning on teaching intro to ruler work. So for those of you who've been asking for that, it is coming back. Working on animals for a friend, Kate. I love that. Yes, I'm going to have that to quilt as well. Oh. I think I must have had too much coffee too quickly this morning, you guys. I, like, cannot thread a needle to save my life. I'm also wondering. I think from when we were cleaning, I got fuzz in my needle. Let's see. No quilting, but sewing patches onto scout uniforms. Love that. Sue says, yes, leaves are changing, but it's darn hot. Finally back to work on the Orifil shark. Yes. Jan says, take the plunge and you'll be amazed at what you can do. The biggest fear is just starting to do it. So Jan, that's referring to the quilting plan challenge and free motion quilting, I'm assuming. Thank you for that. Love that. There we go. Oh my gosh. I don't think I've ever had so much trouble threading a needle. Really got to work on pacing my morning coffee, clearly. Do, do, do. Alrighty. Always the clunky bit. Always the clunky bit. Let's see. Jan also said, oh, hey, Carol. Jan also says, I've had a long run for four years and sat, and I would not even change the thread. Um, and she says that she is, yes, talking about Free Motion Quilting Academy and the Quilting Plan Challenge. Thanks for that. All right, we got to decide. Well, I also need to, did I not bury my ends or did I just miss one? Oh, I must have just missed one. Okay. Well, let's start with this. All right, here's a, here's a little impromptu, impromptu lesson. I get asked all the time, Holly Ann, when I finish quilting, what do I do with my ends? Here we go. You ready? Where'd my scissors go? <laughs> this is the fun of free motion, free motion quilting Friday. Um, I don't come in with like a big fancy plan here on Fridays. We're just hanging out, sewing together as friends do. Uh, but I love to throw in little, little lessons like this. Um, you know, those reminders to make sure that you clean out your bobbin rays because it'll affect your tension. Um, this tip about bearing thread. So what I've done here, there are four ends, right? The top and bobbin of the start and the stop. 
I've trimmed the ends even, and this is, you know, three-ish inches long, three, four inches. And then I've got this big eye needle, and I just shove all four ends through there. You can also use a self-threading needle. I do not get along with self-threading needles, but that's a personal thing. So if you like self-threading needles, do that. So thread through, and then right where all those threads came out of your quilt, put your needle in. I have my finger on the back of the quilt to make sure I don't poke all the way through. I want to run under the quilt top and through the batting, okay, for about a needle's length, see? And then I'm going to use that finger on the back to push up so I pop the needle right back out the end, okay? Then we tug everything in there and give it a sharp little yank to make sure that you pull the little knots and clump of the thing. You can also, like, properly knot this before you begin if you wish. Pull that down into the batting, and then very carefully trim flush with the quilt top. Quick little massage with your finger. That start and stop vanishes. Absolutely fabulous, right? Let's see. Sharon says, I'm happy to see you working on a sit down long arm. I have a tiara three and we'll be setting that up for the challenge. I'm working on some embroidery machine work today. So interestingly, Sharon, this is actually an industrial machine, not a sit down long arm, but it works very similarly. It just has a slightly different orientation. So a sit down long arm, the butt of it where the flywheel is would be oriented towards you guys. And the throat space would actually be a little bit longer. Um, but in terms of like principle of like this versus sit down long arm, super, super similar. Um, also super similar to a domestic machine. My biggest difference here um, is that I do have a large throat space. Um, I did finally make that upgrade after teaching free motion quilting on a teeny tiny machine for years and years and years. Um, and the, the viewing experience of me quilting, trust me, is much more pleasant on this. I don't want this attached to the front. Hang on. I want this attached to the back. Plot twist. Um, good morning, Rhonda. And Carrie says, I bought a used long arm being sold locally. have since finished eight tops that have been sitting around for years. That's so amazing. And she says, I do have many left to go. Um, honestly, I have more than eight quilt tops sitting around that are waiting. And I have a long arm. I just have been working on other things. Okay. So the reason that I decided that I want to put this on the back is because I want to be able to top stitch it to the front. And, um, yeah, so we're going to have a quick little plot twist here. Now, I'm going to try something new today, which you guys know is always dangerous. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to try my, my friend Elise of Blossom Heart Quilts put a video on Instagram this week, last week, talking about turning corners while binding without breaking thread. So I'm going to give it a whack. You ready? Some of you guys are definitely like, Holly, and you've never done that. And some of you guys are like, like I was, which is the, wait, what? <laughs> okay. I feel like my needle's in the way, though. Oh, all right, all right, all right. Hey, that was pretty good. Okay, so I need to come a little further down in order to line that up better. But the key there is basically to back your needle up right to the edge, and then you can kind of swoop it up. I'll I'll talk it through on this end over here. Let me get down to the let me get down to the edge. This is the other reason I love the industrial machine is because it is 2,500 stitches per minute. This is a Juki J150 uh, QVP in case you're curious. It's a straight stitch only machine. Um, I'm a very pokey piecer and I really hate binding. And so having a straight stitch machine that helps me do both of those things more efficiently just makes my life better, basically. <laughs> it just makes my life better. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come right down to, like, where I'm going to be stitching this binding. I'm going to do a little bit of a back stitch, just 
because it's habit. I guess now that I think about it, if I'm not breaking thread, I don't necessarily need to do that. And I'm going to pivot. Oh, I need to come down a little further. So that my foot is lined up with the edge of my quilt. Then I'm going to back that needle up right to the edge and fold. So you take the end of your binding and kind of push. Because remember, we're imitating that fold straight up, fold straight down fold. So see how I pull the binding around. So I've got a double layer of that uh, creased edge here. I have the crease here and then the unfinished edge lines up along this side. And then off we go. All right, Elise, amazing. So Blossom Heart Quilts on Instagram, if you wanna go follow her, great, great tip. What's a uh, interesting quilting tidbit that you have learned lately that made your process more efficient, more enjoyable? Any of the above? Would love to hear. Now I'm about to be faced with a difficult decision because this is going so efficiently that I'm going to have to decide if I want to finish this binding while we're hanging out together or if I want to finish it in a few minutes, but take the time to press it first. Oof, we'll see. we got to get through the binding join. We'll see how long that takes. Oh, yes, Rachel, using a walking foot for straight line quilting. Do tell, do tell. Interestingly, that is a little bit of a disadvantage of this machine is it does not have a walking foot. Um, though I don't do a lot of straight line quilting, so it hasn't been too bad. Uh, let's see. Oh my gosh, see, that's so funny. Her latest tip, there are no elves doing the sewing when she's not at her machine. <laughs> I love that. Um, Rachel, zigzag stitches or quilting zigzags with a walking foot? I love either one. Oops. Jill says, having a wool mat and a small iron right next to my machine when piecing. Yes. So I don't have that set up here, or at least I haven't yet, but I historically um, have had a little table right here next to my machine. Um, sometimes what I will do is actually have it here because I have this you know nice square table and you are absolutely correct. That is a game changer, a game changer. Love it. I see a few places on this, but my tension was not quite up to snuff. It's fine, especially since this is just a sample quote from me. But that's a good reminder for me. The next thing I put on the long arm, I need to adjust the tension before I get going properly. Let's see. Rhonda says, glad you'll have the replays. My internet is so unpredictable. Yes, Rhonda, I am a very, very uh, dedicated creator of replays. Uh, whenever possible, I'm a, I'm a real big believer in that because I love um, how global the Quilting Rockstar community is. I love that we can be in different countries, different time zones, um, have very different lives. Some rock stars have full-time jobs, some don't, et cetera. Uh, but I know that maintaining that and um, all of us being able to participate in events and activities together is highly dependent on there being a replay because of the spread of time zones, et cetera. So I'm happy to provide that. Yes. Uh, Grant, uh, Sarah Grant says, um, pr finger press my half square triangles before I iron them. Yes, yes, yes. Love that. Um, Rachel says, quilting zigzag with the walking foot using a triple zigzag stitch at the longest setting. Ooh, fascinating, Rachel. Carol submitted her free motion quilting academy final project. Yay. I love that. I love that. I love that. 
Yay, yay, yay. Look at that blazing around. I hope my binding's long enough. It suddenly looks a little iffy. Ooh, Sue says, anyone have suggestions for how I can protect my fabric and supplies when it's very humid in the house? Um, ooh, that's a good question. Let me think on that one, Sue. How humid are we talking? Is my first question. Um... Because I am definitely curious whether or not it is like, <laughs> you'll know how I mean this too. Is it like Canadian humid or is it like I would consider it humid? If you know what I mean. And the reason I ask that is because I think um, if it's just simply more humid than you're used to, it is possible that like what feels very humid inside the house in Canada might not necessarily be as concerning as it feels. If it just is like, oh my gosh, it feels so much more humid than usual, but is it humid enough to be a problem for your fabric? 90% is very humid. Okay. That's the question I was asking. Um, just purchase a dehumidifier, but no AC. Honestly, having a dehumidifier run would be my number one suggestion on that. Um, for what it's worth, we actually, so with our new townhouse, um, this wasn't related to fabric. It was more related to like the house itself and the fact that we live in a stucco house and we want to, you know, maintain low moisture, uh, because of that. But man, my binding snuck right up on me there. Um, but we, we got the like box dehumidifiers, like the kind of more industrial style ones that have the tube that you can run to the sink. Um, yes, it is both Canadian and US humid. Thank you. So like, yes, that's what I was trying to ask and was fumbling all around about it. Um, but, um, my brain, it's going to come back. Hang on. Oh, we, I mean, and it was like, they were probably like $400 us. Like they were not cheap at all to get those humidifiers. But let me tell you, then you don't have to empty it and we just leave it running all the time. So because of our concerns about like moisture in the house with stucco, et cetera, and we have like a half basement at the new townhouse. Um, and the part of that half basement that is underground has had moisture issues in the past. Um, we down there and then in our laundry room, we just run the dehumidifiers all the time because those are the two rooms that like get the most humid. So that would be my recommendation is, uh, you know, whatever dehumidifier you ordered, especially if it's just like a small one, if you find you're having to empty it a lot, I think it's worth the investment to like get the nice one because it can just run continuously. And we set it to like the humidity we're willing to let that space be. And as the, the like water in it fills up, it just like drips out into the sink. So I would definitely consider, um, I would definitely consider like heavily dehumidifying, particularly where your fabric is. As far as storing the fabric, um, keep air moving around the fabric. So even like these, it's hard to see, but there's like a little crack in here. Like these are far from airtight, right? So I keep mine in cabinets, but that's to keep the dust off. It's not to keep the air out. Um, cotton does best when it breathes. That's why ultimately the absolute best way to store your quilts is literally like on a bed, right? Because cotton needs to breathe or it will mold. It will mildew. So I would keep it um, out as much as can you can where the like air is circulating. If you're concerned about dust as I was, um, these are from Ikea that they're like the Billy bookcases with the like little doors that go on them. Um, and it'll help keep that dust off, but still allow enough air to move around the fabric that it's not going to retain any moisture. Great question. Yes. Um, let's see. Rhonda. Yes. This is an industrial machine that I'm quilting on. This is a Juki J150 QVP. Um, I'm obsessed with it. I'm not going to lie. I love it very, very, very much. Um, it helps this pokey piecer actually get stuff done, which is really important <laughs> in my line of work. <laughs> um, and I love the big throat space. So you get a lot of throat space, a lot of bang for your buck with that. 
Let's see. Um, Ellie says your video about tension for FMQ helped me a lot. I watched it after quilting my quilt and then a bad surprise. Oh no, Ellie, I'm so sorry. But I'm so glad that the video was helpful. That is great to hear and definitely my goal. So y'all, I'm doing a very basic straight join here. Binding and I have just not been getting along lately. So I finally succumbed and was like, we'll just keep it simple for now. And when Binding and I are getting along again, I'll do nicer joins. <laughs> Some of you guys here have been here for the saga of Binding and I not getting along. Look at that. Ta-da! Dun-dun-dun-dun! Oop. All righty, we, oh, man, our time flies by. It's already 10. We've had a bit of time together. Let me show you this. Give you a little sneak preview of how nice this is going to look flipped around to the front. Isn't that just going to look so lovely? I'm so excited about it. So y'all, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, if this is your first time here, my name is Holly Ann Knight of String and Story, and it is my job to guide you to quilt with confidence. If you have found this fun, if you are curious about learning how to free motion quilt confidently, I would love to invite you to my free quilting plan challenge that I'm teaching next week. Uh, we kick off on Monday. I will be live here on YouTube every day at 3 p.m. Eastern for 30 to 45 minutes talking through uh, what the heck to quilt wear, starting with what is a quilting plan and why do I need one? And we get increasingly practical through the week. Until by the end of the week, we're talking truly about what free motion quilting supplies do you really need? How do you adjust your tension? How do you get started uh, so that you can finish your own quilts? And then from there, I'll introduce you to how you can, can continue learning from me and how to actually get these motifs mastered and get them on your quilt. So if that is of interest to you, um, I'm dropping a link now for the quilting plan challenge. It's a totally free event, but I encourage you to sign up because I have a fabulous workbook that I would love to email to you. Plus, by registering with your email address, you'll get the uh, emails each day with a link to the replay. So if you're not able to join live, you won't have to miss a thing. So guys, I will see you on Monday. I am so excited for this free motion quilting challenge. I'm so excited to have gotten some time to quilt with you here this morning. Have a fabulous weekend, rock stars.